Hello guys, Colin here. This is the Katana Artist, the flagship solid-state amplifier from BOSS. One of its biggest selling features is that it has a Class AB power stage, where most solid-state amps, in the guitar world at least, are Class D. Amplifiers quite often try to sell themselves on their class. There we are Class A or a Class B, Class AB or Class D, but what the hell does any of that mean? Is there really that much of a difference? And what does it mean in real terms for a guitarist? Let's take a look and find out. The class of an amplifier is essentially what methods and elements are used to perform the amplification. There are many ways to achieve the results of making things louder, so it's convenient for amp designers to group these methods into classes. Each class has its own benefits and drawbacks compared to the others, and for the sake of this video we'll focus on the main two, efficiency and linearity. Efficiency, as the name suggests, is how efficient the amplifier is. How much of its power actually goes into making the signal louder, and how much is wasted, lost to the environment, as heat. Linearity is the ability of an amplifier to reproduce the small input signal as a louder signal, but still retain all of its details. The greater an amplifier's linearity, the more the amplified signal is a true representation of the input. So naturally we seek to have an amplifier that can do both high efficiency and high linearity. Unfortunately, the universe conspires against us. For us to gain one, we must sacrifice the other. So with that in mind, I'm going to run through the four main types of amplifier classes you'll find in the guitar world and outline where they sit on the efficiency and linearity scale. Class A is the simplest form of amplification, requiring the fewest components. You may well have heard of the term single-ended in relation to amplifiers. This means that there's only one output device, be it a valve or a transistor, in the active circuit. Class A is the only way to achieve single-ended operation. All other classes that we're going to look at require pairs of output devices. In a Class A amplifier, the output device is conducting over the entire range of the input signal. It's always on. This affords the amplifier incredible linearity, often being held aloft by audiophiles as the holy grail of audio reproduction. However, having the output device constantly conducting makes the amplifier horribly inefficient. Real-world numbers put Class A amplifiers at between 15 and 30% efficient, with the rest of the power being lost as heat. This necessitates Class A amps being large and heavy due to the need for ventilation or heat sinking, which often makes them more expensive. Plus, they require a lot of power, so you won't see very many battery-powered Class A amps. Actually, one of the only places you'll still find Class A amplification is in guitar amps. Boutique, single-ended valve amplifiers can be large, heavy and inefficient. It's part of their appeal. We put up with all those negatives for DEM TONES, BRAH! But if we want to make amplifiers a little more practical and cost-effective, we need a different solution. Class B was an attempt to improve efficiency by using a pair of output devices in a push-pull arrangement. How this works is that one device will shoulder the load for the positive half of the input signal and then pass the load onto the other device for the negative half. With only half the output devices operating at any given time, we get huge improvements in efficiency, with a theoretical maximum of around 80%. However, splitting the input signal into two halves for amplification presents a problem when the amplified signal is recombined. The amplified waveform doesn't match up well at the handover point between the two output devices. This is called crossover distortion and is a huge problem if you're trying to accurately recreate an audio signal. This poor linearity means that, while much more efficient, Class B amplifiers don't see much use. But that's not to say we can't make them better. Class AB is the most common class of amplifier, being the best compromise between efficiency and linearity. It operates in the same way as Class B, but instead of dealing with only one half of the input signal, each output device continues conducting for more than half of the time. When recombining the amplified signal, this reduces the handover gap to the point where crossover distortion is inaudible or eliminated entirely. This produces linearity very close to Class A amplification, but also improves upon efficiency, with numbers anywhere between 50 and 70%. In fact, at low wattages, Class AB operates as push-pull Class A, achieving the best possible tonality, but won't turn your amplifier into a bonfire when you crank it up. The final piece of this puzzle is Class D, which is a very different beast. It throws out linearity altogether in favour of using pulse width modulation to represent the input signal being amplified. 
The input signal is converted into a series of pulses, the width of each pulse being proportional to the analog signal, a widely used technique to get analog performance from a digital operation. PWM allows for the output devices to be rapidly switched on and off, yielding efficiencies in excess of 90%. These ultra-efficient amplifiers give off very little heat, allowing devices to be made much more compact as they require little to no ventilation or heat sinking. Since barely any energy is lost, they can also be powered from batteries, meaning very small, portable amplifiers can be produced cheaply. Of course, the payoff here is that Class D designs need to be carefully filtered to remove the high-frequency components of PWM switching from the amplified signal. Relatively low frequency PWM operation can adversely affect high frequency audio reproduction for this reason, and some designs can give different sound qualities depending on the speaker load. While some high end Class D amplifiers are starting to rival Class AB in terms of sound quality, these are still quite expensive and remove the low price tag benefit of having a Class D amplifier. Still with me? Good, let's get back to the Katana Artist then. Boss have opted to design this as a Class AB rather than Class D, meaning the improved linearity and sound quality should be to this amp's benefit, making it sound more like a real amplifier than other solid state amps on the market. More importantly, the push-pull nature of the amplifier should allow it to feel and respond in a way that's familiar to guitarists who have used valve amplifiers. It's always a big complaint of solid state amplifiers that they just don't behave like a valve amp, even if they sound good. And a big part of that comes down to how Class D amplifiers utilise an entirely different amplification method than conventional valve amplifiers. The Katana seeks to rectify this. But that's enough theory. None of this matters if the Katana can't deliver on those promises. So let's hear how it sounds. While the Katana has recording outs and USB functionality to access more sounds through its software, I'm not interested in exploring any of that here. What I want to know is how well this operates as a standard traditional amplifier. It boasts a specially designed Wazacraft speaker and it would be simply criminal not to mic this up and hear how it performs. All the sounds in the previous track and the ones you're about to hear are accessible through the front panel of the amplifier without any need to connect this to a computer. Any effects will be ones built into the amp and I'm going to focus mainly on the rock and metal tones as distortion is usually the Achilles heel of solid state amps.
hearing that, it's no surprise why the Katana range has dominated the budget market for the last year or so since its release. The sounds available are not only wide ranging but punch well above the price point of the amplifier. This doesn't sound as sterile as many will have come to expect from solid state amplifiers and while there are still some subtle nuances that distinguish valve amplifiers missing here, it will be very difficult for many to tell the difference. Most importantly, the interaction between player and amplifier is phenomenal. It responds to playing naturally and has a touch and feel that makes me forget I'm not using one of my Valve amplifiers. Playing through the Katana Artist is a rich and enjoyable experience that allows your mind to switch off from the equipment and just focus on the noises that you're making. The disconnect I often feel with solid state amplifiers just isn't there, and I think this can be attributed in part to the decision by Boss to make this a class AB amplifier. My familiarity to the response and sound of push-pull operation is satiated with a Katana Artist. Recording with this was super easy. That Waza speaker is incredible for close miking and there's more than enough volume on tap to get the cone moving. Although if miking a cabinet is still a mystery to you or you want to record without shaking the walls, then the recording out will make silent recording a breeze while still offering all that class AB power amp benefit. The only dent in the armour is in the construction of the cabinet itself. It's clear that this is where money has been saved to load up the amp with more features. The artist is a step towards making a katana that's a viable option for gigging musicians and not just a practice tool for the bedroom. It's got the volume, the speaker and the performance, but the construction doesn't feel robust enough to deal with the abuse and rigours an amplifier will receive on the road. It's certainly not as solid as other combo amps I've owned. For studio and session work, as well as home use, I don't see this as an issue, but I would take special care if I was throwing this from van to stage, night after night. All in all, I'm exceptionally impressed with the Katana Artist in terms of sound quality, responsiveness to playing and ease of use. I think it absolutely delivers on its promise that its Class AB power section is the dominant choice over Class D amplifiers. It is in the price point where you could get a genuine small valve amplifier for the same money, but you'd miss out on all the features, effects and raw power going that direction. The Katana Artist is a lot of amplifier for the money and doesn't feel or sound like the compromise other solid state amps can be. And if you've liked this video and you want to see more content from me, then you can hit the subscribe button and that will notify you of all new content as it comes out. My Patreon's also there for exclusive secret stuff if you want to support me further and there's other videos you might not have seen. But that's all for now guys, keep it loud and I'll see you later.